Hey guys, Mrs. Talk Techie here, and I'm continuing with Bitmoji, a comprehensive guide. And for the most part, all of our videos that I've created have been to enhance teaching and learning. This one, no lie, it is just for fun. It's something that we did at the end of the school year during remote learning to just keep our kids engaged that last week of school. In addition to that, I'm not going to lie, I do not even know where or I originally got this from, but if the original creator is out there watching, listening, I want to thank you for sharing it out and for allowing us to benefit from your creativity. It is amazing. I have three objectives for today. Number one is to show you how we shared this out with our kiddos, how we used it as an uh, assignment. Uh, number two is how you can acquire your Bitmojis from your teachers. And number three is how you can actually create them, add those Bitmojis once you've acquired all of those images. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I want to showcase is just how our campus went about sharing this out with our students, how we used it. And uh, what we did is we did put it in our LMS, which was Google Classroom, and this made a copy for each student. So depending on your LMS, whether you may be using Microsoft Teams or Schoology, I'm not sure if they have that feature. If they don't have that feature and you do want your kiddos to work on it and edit it, you can force a copy of this actual slides presentation. If you don't know how to do that, I'll, I'll link the, I have a quick video tutorial, I'll link it in the description below. All right guys? And so that's only if you want your kiddos to work on it like this. Let me show you what we did. Um, I had a little video here of myself telling the kids, you know, unfortunately this is how we ended the school year, but let's do something fun the last week of school and let's see if you can find some of your teachers. And so the next page had the names of their teachers and then the instructions were to circle or underline whatever's easiest for them because some of them do work on a mobile device and I think uh, doing certain trying to do certain formatting features or editing is harder on a mobile device. So as long as we could tell that they found those teachers, perfect. The next slide was the actual, you know, kind of Where's Waldo inspired scene. And I did include a little circle that they could copy and paste, right? And put on here. What you could also do is do a control C, control V and just layer them over this so that they don't have to do it themselves, like do the copy and paste. Uh, I would recommend that. That's something that I learned later on, uh, something that we've been learning so much from each other from uh, during remote learning. So like that, if you give that to your kiddos, there's already, you know, whatever, you can make 10, 15 of them and they're already kind of overlapped on each other so that they grab it and they can just move it. For example, I grabbed the first one and I can move it to this teacher and there she is, and I still have my original circle there, plus many more, right? So um, then once they found their teachers, they could send it back to us, uh, just depending on how you wanna go about that, it's, it's up to you. So that was number one. Number two is how to collect all your Bitmojis so that you can start adding them here. And I'm gonna show you from start to finish creating that Google form, hopefully, five minutes is all it'll take you. All right, guys? So I'm in my drive right now, and this is one of my best practices is every time I'm gonna create a new document, I go exactly where I want that document saved. So I've already created a folder called Where's My Bitmoji Teacher? Those are my practice ones. Um, and so from here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna start a new Google form. Now, the reason why I do that is wherever you start that document from, that's where it's going to be saved. So that saves you the trouble of moving it later to, to wherever you want that destination to be. So for the sake of trying to keep this as quick and easy as possible, let's start with the title. I'm going to name this 2Bitmoji Teacher just because, you know, just because I had a practice one. Um, so then after this, the first question I am going to ask for first name and last name. And the reason why I'm doing that is because sometimes it's hard to tell who um, the teacher is. Short answer, require it. And now we're gonna add another question. And uh, this is not necessarily a question, this is gonna say, upload your Bitmoji here. And then instead of multiple choice, we're gonna change it to file upload. And it's gonna tell you, hey, by the way, all the files that are gonna be uploaded 
are gonna be uploaded to the owner's drive. So in my case, me, whatever file gets uploaded, it's gonna be saved in my drive. So just FYI, they're just letting you know. So continue. And then after this, you have other features. So do you want specific file types? I don't, I never mess with that. How many files do you want them to upload? So I, if I'm doing this type of activity, I tell my teachers, can you give me more than one just in case? If you do a beach scene, I always struggle with that, uh, you might get the same type of bitmojis all the time. So you want a little bit of variation. Uh, so I ask for at least three to five if they want. Uh, and then of course, maximum file size, you can change this up. I've never had a lot of problems other than with 10 so um, megabytes, so we're good. So I'm gonna require this. And from here, we're basically done. But if you wanna kinda jazz it up a little bit, I'm gonna take you back to our Google Slides presentation. And here, I've created this word art here. You can change it to whatever you want, but I want this to be my header. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go to File, Download, and you can either download this as a JPEG or a PNG, doesn't really matter in this case. And once you download that, I'm gonna go back, once you download that, you're gonna hit the little painter's palette here and choose image. And I'm gonna to go to upload. I'm gonna browse and here it is. I will give you a little disclaimer. What I've noticed is that every time I download it from a Google slide, it always looks a little on the pixelated side. So I like to do a screenshot. So you, if you have the snippet tool, you can do that too. It, it just keeps things clear. Once you have it here, this is my downloaded one though. Once you have it here, you can kind of mess with it to show what you want to be displayed. And now I'm gonna click on done. And there you have it. And Google always automatically kind of switches the colors for you, but I want my favorite, which is kind of like a fuchsia. And I'm going to close that up. And guys, we're ready. It's done, this is it. However, let's go to the responses section and I just wanna let you guys know that you always have the option of uh, getting notified every time somebody uploads to this Google form. So if you wanna kinda of stay up to date, let's say you're on a deadline to try to create this and you're just waiting, but don't want to be telling people, hey, have you submitted? If you click on this one, it'll tell you when you get a new submission. So I highly recommend that one. So other than that, guys, I don't have to mess with any of the settings. All I'm gonna do is go to send. I'm gonna click this link and I'm gonna shorten this link. You're gonna copy this one and this is the link you're gonna share out with your teachers. You can add it on an email, you can send it out through message, whatever means you use to communicate with your teachers, you can send out that link and they can complete it. And so if you wanna see how they would see it, we click on that little eye and this is how your teachers would be receiving that Google form. So I'm gonna show you uh, based on the, the demo one I did, that's the one I shared with some of my friends and colleagues to help me out. I'm gonna show you what you're gonna do next. After you have it, you're gonna go to that folder, which is the ones that they shared with me. Um, and uh, for example, these you can tell are transparent but not this one. This one is not a transparent image. So what I would have to do with this image is make it transparent so that we can add it to our Google slide presentation. So step one, you download this to your computer. Then you'd go to remove.bg and here you're just going to upload the image, find it on your downloads and upload. And it's going to make it a transparent image for you and you're ready to go. So what I love about this is I can actually copy this image or you can choose to download it, re-upload it, save it to your drive. I can just copy it, go to my file and just to show you that you can paste control V and it's a transparent image. I know this is on white, white on white, but if I put it over here, you can tell it's a transparent image. So that's all you have to do. You don't necessarily have to download every single one. As long as you upload them there, control C, you can copy it, come and paste it over here. So now that you have all your bitmojis from your teachers, you're gonna go to slide number five, and this is the one you can actually edit. 
Now, number four is just an image, and I'll tell you why I did that in a bit. So here, you can delete this one and you can paste your Bitmoji. So Control C, Control V gives you the copy and paste shortcut. So I know this isn't great. I didn't ask for a beach scene, uh, so that's why it looks like that. But you can easily mess with it in that manner. Remember that when you're trying to resize images, if you pull from the corners, you'll keep those proportions there. So FYI, so that's what you would do, guys. Just like I did earlier, I deleted one and added another one. If you want all of yours to just be your campus and your colleagues, you can delete all of these. So once you're done, the idea is you're going to download this. So file just like we did earlier, and I'm gonna go with a JPEG, an image, and I'm downloading it. I'm gonna add another slide here, and I'm going to change by right-clicking, change background, choose image and I want my image to be that slide I just downloaded. The reason why we want to do that is so that when the kids are messing with it like editing it maybe circling they're not actually moving those images around. I hope that makes sense. Again if you take a look at it it is pixelated to me it's blurry so I would recommend a screenshot or a, a using your snippet tool. So really that is the gist of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. So there you have it guys. I hope you like that. Remember that it, don't limit yourself to just thinking, hey, it's only a, a Where's Waldo activity. You can find the picture of your campus and put all of your Bitmojis there. You can create a digital yearbook. Really the possibilities are endless. You can create postcards, you can create activities. So thank you guys so much for watching again. Um, I think I have two videos left for this comprehensive guide and then we're done and hopefully you'll be able to see it when I share it out. Don't forget to subscribe and like, especially once I'm done, I'm going to create a how-to video where I'm going to attach the final uh, resource that, I'm, uh, that I've been compiling here. So thank you for watching guys and we'll see you later.